Well, let's continue with this final part of this presentation, and on this part I would like to discuss software reliability. In the previous parts I have told already about the general methodologies, general level methodologies. However, if you want to obtain the precise estimate of reliability for a specific type of system, like a software system, or like a specific hardware system, or mechanical system, and so on, you have two options. Option one is to reuse general level methodology on this specific level. For this you need to adopt it somehow and so on. And the second option to use the methodology that was developed exactly for this type of system. And in this part I would like to discuss the methodologies that was developed exactly only for software reliability. And in this slide I would like to show the main difference between the hardware and software methodologies and why there is a software-oriented methodologies. On the left side you, had, you can see this bus tube curve. Uh, it is a typical failure rate for hardware. And in the right time you can see the same for the software. And I would like to say that there is fundamental differences in the nature of hardware and software faults. Usually the hardware faults happen because of the, some environmental impact like cosmic radiation, temperature, voltage, uh, low electric voltage for example, and because of the hardware wear out. Software doesn't become older and software doesn't experience this uh, external environmental impact. And the main type of the faults in software are software bugs. And you can see that at the beginning the fail rate is pretty high because you just uh, introduced your code, you just implement your code and you introduced a bug on this code. After that we have a testing and debugging, the number of bugs uh, goes down and the fail rate also goes down. After that we want to add we, we want to add new functionality to our software, we implement new code and we introduce new bugs because of that. And the fail rate goes up again. Uh, and uh, and at the end we have this kind of saw. So and, uh, because of this difference, uh, the application of the uh, I called here hardware methodologies, but I will say the general methodologies uh, to software has to be done really with care. And uh, therefore, sometimes it's better just to use a soft software only reliability methodologies. And for the classification of these methodologies, I, would, I will use one more time this dependability tree. Dependability has four means. It is a fault prevention, fault tolerance, fault removal, and fault forecasting. And therefore, there are the methodologies aimed at fault prevention, aimed at fault tolerance, fault removal, and fault forecasting. Let's start with the first group. These methodologies uh, are aimed at preventing the introduction of faults during the development of software. And usually these methodologies are process oriented. For example, it can be standard or guidelines that tell us how to implement the code. Very famous standard is MISRA C and MISRA C++. Uh, the, uh, the standard is commonly used in the automotive industry and it told us where to use or not to use the pointers, which type of variables to use, how to call these variables, how to organize the functions, and so on. Also, we can use formal methods. In the case, if we can describe our software using some formal method, for example, state machine, we can also verify our system according to the state machine, and we can uh, catch the faults during the development period. Also, I have told that the software does not age, uh, however, uh, it can be memory leaks and if you run this software during one month or something like that, uh, it will eat all the memory and it will crash. Therefore, there are methods against the software aging and, uh, so, and they are also fault prevention methods. And also, we should use the certification of the component of the shelf. And so on. The next group is devoted to, uh, is aimed at fault tolerance. So here we agree that uh, it can be faults in the software, but we want to be tolerant to this fault. And 
these techniques are used in safety critical software. And the basic decomposition is single version technique and end version technique. In single version technique, we just try to implement different catchers of the errors. As far as we understand that our software works erroneously, we're trying to roll back or we try to run, run over it one more time or something like that. And in an end version technique, we have just different, uh, different samples of the software. So different programs developed by different guys or different companies. And we run these programs in parallel and compare the output. It works uh, like double model or triple model redundancy in the hardware. And the last group I also want to mention, this group, it's pretty interesting, uh, the software implemented hardware fault tolerance. The idea that uh, hardware also can be faulty and in memory and in the CPU we can have the bit flips when because of the cosmic radiation, for example, the one bit in the memory from zero flip to one or vice versa. And we can tolerate it using the specific software. For example, we can read variable several times or save it to the different parts of memory or run functions several times and compare outputs and there are much more advanced methods. Next group is the methodologies for fault removal. And this is all about testing and debugging. So if you Google something about the test strategy, testing strategy, software debugging, and if you obtain some methodology, it will be the methodology for fault removal. So it can be also formal methods and verification using the formal methods. There are various testing techniques, uh, different unit testing, system testing, and so on. And there is a number of methodologies for dynamic analysis and semantic code analysis. And the next group is, uh, as for me, it is the most interesting group uh, because it is the methodologies for fault forecasting. It means that, uh, and usually we call these methodologies just reliability models because reliability models return us the reliability of the software so or predict the reliability of the software. And these methods can be separated into three classes. First class is software metrics, and this metrics uh, can be used in order to measure software with to describe the software using some numbers. For example, number of lines of code, uh, McCabe complexity, Halstead, a uh, group of object-oriented metrics. So we just can measure this code and uh, define, for example, the complexity of the code. And after that, we can use the component-level reliability model in order to define in order to estimate the reliability of the of this program using these metrics and using this model. For example, there are failure rate models, error seeding models, curve fitting models, so and so on. These models help us to define the reliability of the software using the software metrics and so on. And also there is a big group of architecture-based software reliability models or system-level reliability models in software. And these models, they decompose the software into the components and try to understand how these components interact with each other and uh, according to the control flow, according to the data flow, according to the exchange of values and parameters and so on. And uh, this is more intelligent ways, uh, more inter intelligent models, however, they also give a better, better estimation of the software reliability. Well, and this is actually four main groups of software reliability methodologies. And I think I've already given some, some intuition, at least what it is. Now let's go further with software reliability standards. In this slide you can see five general standards. It is just standards that tell us how to develop the reliable software. There is IS2 IEC software, uh, two IEC standards, guidance and so on, uh, IEEE and Society of Automotive Engineers. Uh, these standards define the, define the process of software development. Uh, which documents we have to prepare, how we should test it, uh, and so on. 
And also there are a number of mandatory standards for each industrial domain, like for automotive domain, for aviation, for medical system, for nuclear power plants. For example, uh, in automotive domain, we have ISO 26262. It is a mandatory reliability and safety standard. And the part 6 of this standard describes the product development and the software level. And uh, this guide describes how the process of software development for the automotive industry have to be carried out. Preliminary is the same we have uh, from the Society of Automotive Engineers. <clears throat> and the last two standards, I already told about them, it is MISRA C and MISRA C++. Uh, these standards doesn't describe. Uh, these standards don't describe the uh, process of software development. However, they describe. They contain a number of rules how we should uh, implement the software, how we should write the code. Preliminary, they say we have in the aviation. The leading uh, software standard for aviation is DO178C. So, and this standard describes the process of how the software should be developed, in which how the hardware should be developed, how it should be tested, with which test cases and which documents we need to prepare, and, and so on. And the GSF Air Vehicle C++ coding standard, it is something like Misery C, but for the uh, aircrafts. So, they even have the same rules that, uh, uh, for example, GSF Air Vehicle standard has uh, some some of the rules are repeated from the MISRA C standard. And I don't want to go into details because um, preliminary is the same story we have for the medical system and for nuclear plants and for some other uh, safety critical industrial domains. Now let's continue with the tools for the software reliability. And here I would say that in comparison with a large number of software vendors and software tools for this general methodologies like FTA, uh, FMEA, Markov chains and so on. Here we have just some tools developed by different guys and applied for different purposes and there is no such a big methodologies and no such big tools like, like in the general level. So that's all what I want to say about that. Okay, and now let's finish with the conclusion. And this conclusion is not for only for this part, but for the entire presentation. I would like to say that these slides contain an overview of the widely applicable reliability methodologies. So, there is much more existing methodologies. I just discussed the most popular ones. This presentation can be used, and at least I will use it, for different reliability analysis tasks as a reference. And all the presented methodologies, these general level methodologies, are well defined in industrial standards and supported by a variety of software tools. And I'm not expected a lot of uh, scientific inventions there or new tools or new standards. I mean, really new. Uh, however, the analysis of the existing software reliability methods has shown the deficiency of the methodologies and tools in the particular domain. And here I would like to say that I think that uh, the future of the reliability methodologies and development of the reliability methodologies are exactly in application of the methodologies for specific type of systems. However, doing this specific methodologies, we have to take in mind that these methodologies have uh, to contain the same interfaces in order to be able to group them and define the reliability of the entire system that consists of different parts like software, hardware and so on. Oh, we, we have to, uh, we need really good reliability methodologies for all these parts and we also have, n have to know how these parts can be connected uh, and to define the interfaces between them in order to obtain the reliability of the entire system. Well, that's all and Thank you for your attention. Bye.